Hey guys, Dr. Z, Dr. Monica Gandhi from UCSF back with a special friend. <laughs> Frodo, Frodo of the nine fingers <laughs> and the ring of doom. Welcome, Frodo. How are you, buddy? Welcome back to the show. Oh, you look the like ring. you are chill. <laughs> look how chill he is. He's like, bro, let's talk about masking. So much to talk let's about. Let's talk about India. Yeah. Let's talk about this phase of the pandemic. Yes. So let's start with India because both of us have a vested interest in this, as does the world, because it, it as India goes, I think it affects all of us. It does. So you and I have been talking a little bit about India here and there for the months. Uh, what's going on? Why are why are their infections not booming yet? What, you know, what's happening? So walk me through what's going on. What happened and where? why are we where we are? Yeah, I mean, you're right. It was almost a miracle to think that such a densely populated country, so 1.36 billion people, W wasn't being hit before this with this terrible virus. And there were lo several reasons, I think. Number one, anyone who could, just like in any society, could stay at home, shelter in place. And then who was getting hit? Even before this, of course, the poor were getting hit. So right. Mumbai slums, there was a Lancet, June 2020 article, 60% of people in the Mumbai slums had been exposed to coronavirus, had gotten coronavirus, about 11% of the general population. So it just shows you that discrepancy if you can't shelter versus like you have people come to your house and you can just stay in your house, which is a lot of what rich people can do. So I imagine these were seroprevalence studies looking at antibodies yes. and they yes. said, okay, like 60% of the people. But then the question was, people were wondering, well, why was the fatality rate so low? Were they mostly elders getting infected in the early days or young people or what was your understanding? I think that's what it, the fatality rates I think were lower because yeah, more younger people were infected. Mm -hmm. And so they could get through it. I also think possibly, I still going back to the, our first conversation that we had about masks, that even the simplest thing you can do is just put a cloth thing, cloth over your face. And I think people were masking and if they got more mild infection because of that. Uh, so I that still inoculum. have my viral inoculum yeah, theory going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then what happened is it seemed like it was getting so much better and suddenly there was like hardly any COVID and, mm -hmm. and it was an amazing time. And so there was, a, I think, an assumption, which I was wrong about, many people are wrong about, that there was more immunity in the population that there, than there was. I thought that too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't because then naturally people completely opened up and there was, you know, some political stuff about Modi, and Modi letting big Hindu festivals go on when he'd closed Muslim festivals a year ago. But oh. of course, Kumela got moved up early. There was like, not, you know, in India, it's not like thousands, like millions of people are yeah. next to each other, yeah. lots of mingling, huge events. And then, uh, and maybe this B1617 is more transmissible. The Indian variant. The Indian yeah. variant, mm. and it went crazy. Yeah. And this going crazy, now this is was the dreaded thing that we thought we weren't gonna see in India, but now we're seeing. Kind of like New York at the beginning, except that let's take New York and multiply it by, you know, 20 fold because 1.36 billion people. So now it's so prevalent. There's so many people getting infected. And even if it has whatever fatality rate it has in India right now, if you're multiplying it by many, many cases, people are dying and getting sick. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was talking to my dad about because he's like, I don't understand, you know, India was doing well and, you know, he, he's worried about our family in Pune, yes, which yes. is a very hard hit area. And, yes. and uh, you know, they're isolated, but they can do that because they're upper middle class. Yes. And the poor cannot do that. They can't. And, uh, and talking about Modi, like in the early days, they did a pretty aggressive lockdown and it preferentially destroyed the poor and they so realized they, just, yeah. they couldn't sustain it. You're so right. Like, remember how he said you have three hours and then we're on lockdown? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like, oh, we'll do it on Tuesday. Yeah. It was like three hours and we're on lockdown, severe lockdown. You may not leave your house. So many people don't have a house. And so people started walking back to their villages, literally, mm. um, because they had no way to make money. And the way that you made money was not like month to month, day to day. Day to day, yeah. So you had no way to make money day to day. It was decimating. Mm. And so that those kind of severe lockdowns, I mean, they are the privilege of the rich and um, no doubt. And it so very fairly, that was not a strategy that could be used. Right. And thus mass distancing saying, um, as much as you could in being outside. So so do you think, because it was interesting, because they, they, it actually worked for a long time. And India is not one country. It is a series of states that are very, very diverse, different different climates, et cetera. And, and yes. uh, getting from one to the other is not entirely easy, but there is a lot of migration, migrant, far, migrant workers, et cetera. And so it almost seems like you have a perfect storm. Like there, maybe there was some degree of natural immunity, natural behavior change with distancing and covering and so on 
no vaccination at that time. Right. And climate warm in the summer and then, you know, winter cools down a little. Right. I don't know how their monsoon was and what happened there, but then- Very hot now. Very yeah. hot now. Yeah, now, now, uh, now coming back, like you said, with these super spreader I events, mixed with a variant that maybe is not more deadly, but is more higher viral load, higher inoculum. Transmissible. transmissible. Yeah, higher inoculum. Exactly. And so then like if you're sitting next, standing next to someone, which you inevitably are in India, yeah. then you're more likely to spread it. And then this is right, the perfect storm. And I think our immunity, um, you know, the, the bizarre part, not bizarre, this actually happened in Michigan, mm. places that surged and had high levels of infection are not surging right now. So like slums in Mumbai, this uh, happened in Michigan, by the way, yeah. counties that had been hard hit, yeah. minority counties, racial ethnic minorities, did not have this latest surge in cases, but Michigan in general had not been hard hit. And so it's a whole other thing. You have to think about natural immunity right. plus vaccinations as you go forward and India, like you say, is right now only at 9.7 first vaccination rate. Yeah, yeah it's very, very, very small. And the one interesting thing, you know, I read an article in The Atlantic by someone from uh, Bhopal, India, who was talking about yeah. making parallels to the gas tragedy, yes. Union Carbide, and basically saying in the early phases, it was the poor that were infected, probably underreported, probably, you know, orders of magnitudes, more people sick and maybe even dying, and we don't even see it, it happens in areas where they're not even getting attention. And now what's happening, and the rich kind of were like, well, this is okay, we've, we're okay, we, we yeah. did this. Yeah, and now, please bring me my food. Please bring me my yeah. food for my servants, Raju, et cetera, yeah, and yeah. my driver and yeah. so on. Right. And now what's happening is you're seeing the rich, and, and he used a line in that, in that piece in clutching their pearls as their loved ones are not having beds and not having oxygen, not having ambulances. Yeah. It's a real divide in India yeah, that people don't realize. In the US, they, we, we think we're polarized. The discrepancy between rich and poor is- oh, it's, it's like, a chasm. It's painful to watch. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's hard when you go back yeah, it because is. you're just like- <gasps> Yeah, it, it is. You feel like you're in like 1800s America yes. in the South or something. Or 1854 London which oh. was the time when cholera was spreading and the rich people could stay in their homes. Ah. And they thought it was miasma. Um, yeah. We talked Evil about this humors, once. Yeah. Evil humors as opposed to like, you know, a fecal oral. And so they wouldn't leave their homes, but the poor had to go out and get all their stuff. And they were the ones who got sick. Ah. And then later it came to them too. It seems to, history seems to repeat itself yes. traditionally and consistently. Yes. And, and so in this now we have, like you said, it's not necessarily that there's something magical going on in India that we should all go, oh, this is a new thing that's brand new. It's that you have what we had in Wuhan, basically, this, the same virus with some modifications that make it a little yes. higher viral load. Now in, an, in a population that has primed through these stochastic events, semi-random events where you have the super spreader event here, super spreader event here, and then everybody disperses. And then you have a country of 1.4 billion people that suddenly is exploding logarithmically in infections with an infrastructure of healthcare that is not designed for that. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so we very much know that people wouldn't be dying at this rate, clearly, obviously, if there was health systems that were different than this. Right. And I hope we'll, I mean, I hope this, makes people think differently about how unfair things are around the world, but it is unfair that people are dying from lack of oxygen. So let, let's talk about this lack of fairness because you and I both have this weird thing about fairness. Um, it, it's really uh, interesting because the United States really was hit hard. And actually this was interesting because like Indian friends of my parents were calling them and, and kind of, it's not gloating, but kind of going, look at America, you guys are supposed to be the bomb. Except they'd say, are? Yeah, are? Like, ba are bhai 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 I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought you're going to uh, have <laughs> the best CDC, the best vaccine, the best everything, but now everybody's dying and look at us. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it, that's what it was like. Yeah. And so my, my mom was mad because she's yeah. very patriotic, you know, having come here and struggled and as an immigrant. And she's like, hey, don't talk to me. Like you, you watch out because you're, they're just underreporting in India what's going on. Yeah. And now to see the, the, the it's just heartbreaking. Tragic and heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really bad. And um, and so the question is, coming to fairness, you have a, I think you've talked a bit about the US um, and patents around drugs and therapeutics and things like that and how it affects countries like India. Help us understand how we might help India by modifying some of this stuff. Yeah, I think there's actually something to be done. 
immediately. There's two things to be done, and I would do it tomorrow, um, May May 3rd, if I were in charge of the world. Mm. I would waive um, patents uh, for COVID-19 vaccines in uh, for that pharmaceutical companies are holding. And I would also donate our very um, extensive excess supply AstraZeneca. of, um, no, not AstraZeneca, oh. 60 million, they already did, that's not enough. Oh. We bought 700 million doses. We bought, remember all that, like Trump said it, and then Biden said it, we bought um, 600 million doses of Moderna and Pfizer together. And then because things weren't going fast enough, bought an additional 100 million right. of Johnson & Johnson. We have 700 million doses of not the 60 million AstraZeneca that they've already released, which I'm grateful for, but that's a drop in the bucket for India. We have many, many more doses that we can release right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if we think of the needs of our population, it's only adults who qualify for vaccine. And um, we're at a a third of our population fully vaccinated. We can, we we have the vaccine supply to immediately give India more vaccine doses. So that, that would be the first thing I do. And that seems really easy to me. I mean, we can't, hoard vaccines when this is happening somewhere else. But uh, one thing I want to say, why would vaccines help immediately? They would help immediately because um, fundamentally mass, like we said before, even the shutdown right now, which is quite shut down, is very devastating for for not only the poor, but actually for like my, um, uh, my I have in-laws there who are dentists or, or who are doctors and they can make no money. Yeah, they can't do it. And so so it is gonna be devastating uh, lockdown. So immediate vaccinations. And, and why do vaccinations bring down cases? They do. We've seen it here. We've seen it in Israel. We've seen it everywhere. Fundamentally, they block transmission. It's incontrovertible. They will, at, this it, it, at this point, any, <laughs> yeah. anyone who says vaccines don't block transmission yeah. really do need to go back to like October 2020 and then and they can just sit there. But right now yeah. we are very clear that we have study after study that show that vaccines maybe up to 94%, maybe even more uh, block transmission. I haven't seen a single case yet of someone who's asymptomatic vaccinated got some COVID in their nose and can pass it on. So the point is it would bring down cases. And we saw this in Israel. We saw this in Michigan. We saw this everywhere where cases were going up. You get enough vaccination, they go down. Okay, so that's why vaccines are like, I consider an immediate strategy. So would you actually even go further and say, maybe the US should delay second dose and, and try to vaccinate part of India. I would, I would, I would. I've, I've always been pushing for that actually, because um, we know from the UK experience that there was no harm uh, in delaying the second dose or many people in the UK that haven't gotten their second dose. They, because they delayed it by three months and they're at 1,900 cases right now out of 66.65 million people. They had seven deaths in their country yesterday from COVID in a country that large. That's at a 51% first dose rate. Right. That's what first dose does for you. Right. So and yes. you have natural immunity already from people who've already yes. been infected. Right? Yes, exactly. Right. So we could actually delay anyone who's been um, infected before, wait on their doses, delay second doses, and we could get a lot more to India. That mm. would be, um, you know, that would be an amazingly um, uh, collaborative strategy that we could do right, right. now. But why, why would we do that? Why? Who cares about India? Like, why should we care? Because, I mean, we, number one, beyond the like obvious moral and ethical implications of not caring about like one, you know, seventh of the planet, right. um, or one six actually, beyond, if you just let that aside, like, um, you know, anything going on over there affects us, any infectious disease until we've, we've gotten it in control everywhere still is happening here. We're not safe from HIV until people in Sub-Saharan Africa are ha- safe from HIV. If there's a variant that I hope, I don't actually think can evade the immune system, but if it's very transmissible, it can come over here until if we're, we're done. If we're not fully vaccinated. If right. we're not fully vaccinated, then we can get more and more cases here. There's umpteen reasons why we're all interconnected. We are interconnected economically, tech industry. I mean, boy, I just saw this New York Times article, the five big tech companies made so much money yeah. this last year. Yeah. And I was thinking how many Indians, you know, um, are, are- Are driving are, those companies' uh, success. Yes, <laughs> yeah. all the work going on in India yeah. for those companies, yeah. um, for people who are up in the middle of the night doing their work there and, for and, the and, companies. And, you know, I said recently on a show, you know, people like to think of India as other, like these are other, they're, they're not other. I mean, no. you and I know this because they yeah. aren't other to us because <laughs> yes, they're family. Yes, yes. But I'm telling you, having been there, you've been there, these are not other. These are our, these are our doctors and our lawyers and our engineers. They come here and do that work too. They do. They work in rural communities. I mean, this, this is, we're all one, 
civilization, all of us. But but so that so that in itself, and then all the reasons you said. Now, one thing I want to make sure people understand: when you and I have said before, variant schmariant, right? Yeah, we say that because. When you're vaccinated, yes, it's variant variant. It is. It in, is until it you're vaccinated. Immune, until you're vaccinated, that's right. of course, a more highly transmissible variant could spread more quickly. That's right. Yeah. So there's no doubt. I think that's the only thing variants do is that they're maybe more transmissible, but not more deadly. Right. And not cantivate the immune system. Right. So going back to this patent question, because yeah. you asked me about patents. So the reason that um, this is kind of I think about this constantly is uh, it has to do with HIV because I'm really I can't wait to go back to being an HIV doctor because even though I'm infectious disease, really my passion is in HIV. And I've been in it for so many years. Yeah. And what happened is I watched in 1996, I was an intern then, yeah. and I watched like we all did people rise from the dead because of highly active antiretroviral therapies. We all watched the mortality plummet from highly active antiretroviral therapies in this country. It was so amazing. And yet at the same time, for years and years and years, people were dying in Sub-Saharan Africa, India, and everywhere else, Brazil, everywhere else except Europe and the US because they could not get access to these highly effective antiretroviral therapies because of patent laws, mm -hmm. because of big pharmaceutical companies saying, I won't make as much money if India, for example, can make cheaper version of Generic. the drug with my formula, yes, mm -hmm. and so, I am not going to give you the formula. We're not going to go off patent. And we and pharmaceutical companies have big ties to uh, government, mm -hmm. uh, to our U.S.-based government. So in the year 2000, for example, they spent $176 million in lobbying fees as people were uh, dying in sub-Saharan Africa of AIDS that they didn't have to die with to ensure that um, – because they wanted the election to go the way they wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. So um, they absolutely – defied and said, no, we cannot release our patents, even though there's life-threatening emergency, we have an easy formula, and people are dying everywhere else except the US and Europe from AIDS. And there was so much international pressure that in 2001, finally, CIPLA in India, so speaking of India, CIPLA Pharmaceuticals in India said, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to make uh, a, a cocktail of antiretroviral therapy for instead of 10,000 a year or 26,000 a year that you're charging for $350 a year. Wow. I'm gonna leave it less than a dollar a day for triple cocktail for to give to Sub-Saharan Africa and to Brazil and to ourselves, and I'm just gonna do it. And of course, pharmaceutical companies um, actually sued South Africa because South Africa were buying these drugs and the Treatment Advocacy Coalition sued back, fought Big Pharma back. And it looked so unpalatable that they were suing South Africa who wanted drugs yeah. to save their people from AIDS that finally the big pharma dropped their lawsuit. And there was so much international pressure mm -hmm. from all of us, from activists, but for just from anyone sitting in around who was like happened to look at the news and saw that people were dying of AIDS when they didn't have to. And finally patent laws, you know, were dropped. I mean, of course only 26 million people out of 38 million people still who have AIDS worldwide, HIV worldwide are on antiretroviral therapy. Mm -hmm. So the fancy, good drugs come here. Mm. And then patent laws have been dropped for some of the drugs that um, are more toxic or harder to use. And, and that's what Sub-Saharan Africans get. Mm. But at least there was so much international pressure that patents were, were dropped, were waived, I should say. Mm. But it was so many years and so many deaths. Mm. So the way I think of what happened then is we they had years that they fought it. We have days, yeah. we have days right now. The Biden administration is considering waiving patents. The, the the second they do this, they have days to do it. They can make things happen faster for India. India can make um, COVID nineteen vaccines for their people. Other people can make it for them, and they could get more vaccines. So 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 isn't India already a big vaccine producer? Like why can't? But they're producing it for these companies. They can't release it locally. Yeah, they yeah. no no. Actually, they are making two types of vaccines: um, AstraZeneca vaccine, which they call Covishield there, right, and then their own vaccine, which is called Covaxin, right. But it's literally a and they were making it for other countries, but then of course, as soon as this happened, they've turned it towards their own population. Right. They do not have enough vaccine. And if we waived patents, for example, other countries could make vaccines for India. I see. And um, we could even say Pfizer, you know, um, I think you just made, I know you just made a billion dollars since, um, just since the beginning of this year. I mean, they, their, their profits, they just estimated are going to be very enormous from the COVID-19 mm. vaccine market. 
Pfizer themselves that could philanthropically give doses to India, but even if they didn't, if we waive the patent, they could give them, you know, they would just give it to them. So um, I I don't know why we're not doing this. There's a big debate going on. I mm. mean, actually, Dr. Fauci supports waiving the patents. Biden is on the fence mm. and they're all thinking about it. Mm. And I keep on thinking, don't think too long, please. Mm. Well, I'll just have, we'll, we're just gonna have to do some internal lobbying, you yes, and I, then. Yes. Aren't we? Yeah. If you know um, people who are very close. I think you do. I, I do. Um, yeah. Please talk to them today. And, and you know what's interesting is like it doesn't matter. It's, it was fascinating because it doesn't matter who is in office. There's lobbying and there's politics. Politics. No matter yeah. what, it doesn't matter. Everyone's like, oh, Trump, oh, Biden. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It and seems that way. It seems it's amazing. That way. Yeah. It seems that way. Now, just as we finish up on India here, a couple of questions. So, what can on the ground Indians do? You know, it, it, they can't, they don't have hospital beds. They, there are shortages of remdesivir and those kind of things, which I'm not sure remdesivir helps a whole heck of a lot. Have you been using, have you found it to be very? I think it could, anything would help. Like right. meaning this would also be helpful if Gilead waived the patent on remdesivir. Mm. I'm actually been wondering about tenofovir, which is an oral um, drug that there's some data that shows that that will help. Um, and which is kind of a relative of remdesivir. Anything can help, but the those I call tools. Mm. Um, the ultimate solution is vaccines. Yeah. But yes, I mean, like oxygen, uh, waving the patent for remdesivir, uh, getting more steroids, like for dexamethasone, anything that we can do financially to raise for India and get more supplies. The, the, the problem oxygen. is we are people, and we should definitely raise money. And actually, people like Priyanka Chopra and like people have a big platform are raising a lot of money. But I think of it still as the U.S. government's responsibility um, as we're like all kind of sitting here happily talking about normal and when can we get back to normal and like mm. when can we take off our masks and I think those are important conversations we'll talk about them but it it's almost paradoxical that we're thinking like when can we all go to baseball games or can when can we be super normal and this is a conflagration mm. and so I think that the US government would have more ability with their um, you know, with their pockets and their donations and oxygen to help. Mm -hmm. And then we will help the U.S. government by uh, telling them to please do this. Yeah, exactly. And and you brought up something which is a good pivot to what we're going to talk about the U.S. now. It's this idea of holding paradox, yeah. which Americans are, humans have a lot of trouble doing. And yet life is full of paradoxes that we hold. For example, how can we talk about what we're about to talk about, which is taking off our masks outside, mm -hmm. and maybe even beyond that, maybe even beyond that, vaccinated yeah. people going back to some semblance of normal in an aggressive way that I don't think CDC has done. I don't think yes. people have talked about. We're talking about that while half the planet is burning with COVID, and the reason is that two things can be simultaneously true. Okay, <laughs> this is where Frodo comes in for me to mention. Frodo. The, the simultaneous of Frodo that your audience doesn't know is he's adorable, but he's actually really smelly <laughs> and he needs a bath. So right now, as I hold Frodo up, he looks adorable and I'm like, so these are a simultaneous paradox that it is being hold hold true right now. Right Frodo. now, beautiful and filthy at the yeah, same this time. This really needs it, a bath. You know, this is true. I mean, this is true. Spiritual people talk about this holding paradox all the time. Yeah. That like, like Zen masters talk about paradox. Yeah. You know, paradox is important, but in this case, you can hold it without cognitive dissonance if you understand that all these angles are true, but partial. So in the, in, in the United States, we've been through this conflagration. There's the, the PTSD is still fresh. Yes. We, we actually, you know, you can say what you will about Trump and people have all kinds of opinions about Trump, but hey, Operation War Speed kind of worked. It did. We it have these great. amazing vaccines yeah. and Biden is spinning them up. Let's use them. Now we're seeing uptake start to, to peter out as that initial phase comes up. And now in Oregon, they're getting overwhelmed again because young people are infected because they weren't vaccinated in the first round. And so we see the effect of the UK variant in Oregon. Yeah. We need to get vaccinated. Vaccinated. Yeah. And then we can get on with it. So what's your take on masks now? Cause you were the mask maven. Yeah, I was, I was the mask maven. I, You're I, like Daenerys, the mother are, of masks. <laughs> <laughs> people were mad at me about that, but I, I, I uh, but I actually did think they reduced transmission. And I je I really do believe in that hypothesis of yeah. viral inoculum. Yeah. However, um, because I am a thinker that does sort of moves with science, I hope when I think about vaccination, I would want us to start thinking. Not start. We should be actively discussing when masks come off. Yeah. And you can be 
like really sad about India and be Indian. You can be someone who wrote five papers on masks, which I did, including one of the first papers in this country, maybe the first that said universal facial masking for the public with my division chief. And you can also actively scientifically think that it's when it's time to take off masks. Right. And doesn't mean that people who are nervous um, have to take off their masks. They can certainly keep them on, but mandates, uh, nervous and also like for years, there may be people who will still mask. Right. But mandates are pub for public health emergencies and they have to be based on science. Otherwise in any country, not just ours who's politicized around masks, any country you cannot put in a public health mandate unless it is indicated by a public health emergency. Yeah. And so it is time to discuss when to remove outside masks and inside masks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what, what we're seeing is now this is gonna bleed into the next school year where we're slapping masks on kids in, in um, schools when case rates are very low in the community, when the majority of adults will be vaccinated or naturally immune. Does it make sense to do that? What's the- what's, No, actually, I think it's really clear that sometimes people forget that like your risk of getting infected, right, is very clearly a, um, uh, two factors. One is if you're vaccinated, you're great. It's very rare for you to get infected. Breakthrough infections are very extremely rare. I actually keep on remembering that it's three zeros and then a 5%. So <laughs> 0.0005% rate of breakthrough infections in the real world, even when cases are still circulating, it's very hard to get symptomatic COVID after being um, after being vaccinated. So you're, you're talking about symptomatic, right? Symptomatic, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your rate of getting COVID-19 um, as a vaccinated person is very rare. Yeah. However, the other thing that uh, prevents you from getting COVID-19 is not having COVID-19 around mm -hmm. um, in the community. So um, having low case rates, which is exactly what will happen, is happening. Uh, we had 21 cases in a, in a city of 896,000 people in San Francisco yesterday with lots of testing going on. It's not like testing has stopped. Right. So it's so hard to get COVID-19 even if you're unvaccinated right. in the city of San Francisco. Right. Why? Because our first vaccination rate is 62%. We're the fastest uh, vaccinating city in the, in the, in the U.S. So the, rate, the, the cases are so low that when we go back to school in the fall, this will be true everywhere. And to put a mask on a child when the only way we'd even know there were any cases is because we're asymptomatically swabbing people, which we never did for any other infection, and your cases are, are, are so low in a population that you they're much, much below 100,000 uh, 100, right now. Um, I just calculated this morning in the UK, they're at 0. 0.9 per 100,000. I don't know if people mm -hmm. can even, but it's very hard to, to look around and see right. COVID in the UK right now. Right. Um, and so to put masks on children, when this Israeli study and even just real life epidemiology showed us that with every 20 point increase in um, vaccination rates in adults, that halves the risk of transmission in children, mm -hmm. because by definition, they block cases, they block transmission, they block um, children being exposed to the virus, then it wouldn't make sense for children to be masked in the fall mm -hmm. um, when those case rates are low. Mm -hmm. And we have achieved everyone who wants to get a vaccine in this country getting it. Do you hear about the teachers union, the federal teachers union or something um, lobbying CDC for language and their restrictions in schools? I did, you know, I, um, it, it made me sad. And the reason it made me sad was this, is that when the CDC guidelines came out for school reopening, they seemed to not totally make sense. There was two parts of it that didn't make sense. Mm. The six feet versus three feet confused a lot of people because, right. you know, the whole standard uh, worldwide is three feet. 3.28 feet by the WHO. And anyway, a lot of studies that had shown three feet was safe. But beyond that, the thing that was the most surprising that um, they released our guidelines on a Friday and Jake Tapper on CNN that Sunday um, interviewed the director of the CDC and he said, why did you say that we can only open schools at a certain transmission, transmission rate in rate. the community? Mm. Um, because you said that it was linked, opening schools was linked to uh, transmission rates in the community but your study, the Wisconsin study showed that wasn't true. Um, you could still open safely if you use all the mitigation procedures. So why did you link it to that? And then he actually showed a map of the United States. He said no schools could open, mm. even though Biden administration said that we he wants schools open. Mm. And there was no clear explanation of that. And then actually um, it was revealed that uh, the, the American um, Teachers Federation did 
insert language. And it's actually very fine, of course, to interview stakeholders. Like when you're making guidelines, you should absolutely interview stakeholders. But if stakeholders can change language in like kind of verbatim and text in opening guidelines of our public health organization, when that wasn't based on the studies the CDC Mm. had published in their journal. So the science said that you could open them during high rates of community transmission. That looks like tampering. And so I think it is political. I mean, actually it made me realize anew, because it's not like this is that surprising. I shouldn't have been so surprised, but it made me realize anew that every administration is going to have politics in their science. And it is actually up to us as scientists, like as academicians, as scientists, you with your big platform, you with your platform of just being a doctor who really informs the public, it is up to us to to pull people back and say, no, it should be based on your scientific studies. It should be based on epidemiology. We should do things that way because school closures have been very problematic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that some people think it's okay, but it's so not fair. It's not fair. That the rich all have their kids in private school because they saw this coming and they pulled them out Mm -hmm. of public and Mm -hmm. put them in private and those have all been open and the public schools to this day are not open. You know, I think it's interesting because you, me, um, Vinay Prasad, Jay Bhattacharya, we're all Bay Area people and we're furious about this because- Because California is the one the the lowest. We are the worst. Now, if you look at nationally, I think 47% odd of schools are fully open. Yes. Another 40 odd percent are on a hybrid. And then only like three or 4% are only remote. It's hard to be in California being yeah. the worst. It's it, We are 50 out of 50 in terms school of reopen. children being back in school, normal kind of full-time learning K yeah. through 12. Yeah. San Francisco, I told you 21, yeah. out of 896,000, still middle school and high schoolers are not back in school, still on online. So back to holding paradox. Yeah. So you have a very progressive area like San Francisco that's really good at getting vaccinated. Yeah. Like, I mean, one of the best in the country. Yeah. Case rates plummeting, but that same progressivism maybe empowers a sort of a pushback on opening schools, even though the same progressivism would say the fairness and equity of school openings mean poor people get educated, get meals, get structure, right. and we're not doing it. Right. So again, holding that paradox. <laughs> yeah, San Francisco has been a paradox throughout this yeah, entire it has. time. Yeah, it has, it has. Yeah. Good and bad, good and bad. Yeah. I'm still glad we're here, but it's, uh, it's yeah. a challenge. And sometimes you're right, we need to be the loud voice. We have been, yeah. but I think it, it, it sometimes- you It behooves f- us though. I mean, like that's why- I hate Twitter, but I'm on Twitter <laughs> um, until this is over because I actually, it behooves us to do this work. Yeah, to keep, to keep shouting about it. And, and also listen, listen and update when things change. Like, you know, like you said, you look, you and I were both wrong about innate Indian immunity yes, to COVID. Yes, we were wrong. Right? I apologized actively for that. Yeah, yeah it's, um, and, and it's tough because I think there were, I think there was only a minority of Indian scientists that were saying, you know what, this is not true. Things are going to get crazy. We need to do something. Yeah. And, and they were not. It seemed so yeah. good for a while. Yeah. And it really yeah. had us fooled. Yeah. Yeah. Because you would think such a dense country. So, so masks outside, is there any reason to be wearing them now? Vaccinated or unvaccinated? No, I would probably only wear them in India in densely populated right, places. So high, high case. So where you yeah. have high case rates mm-hmm. and you're in a densely populated situation. We are getting down from any of those high case rates in the United States, as you know, a negative 26% drop in the last 14 days of cases in the United States, including those places of concern, Michigan and Minnesota and Philadelphia, and, or sorry, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York, everything coming down. Right. Um, so, uh, and even the case rates, like you said, in Oregon are actually not that high. It's more that they haven't had a chance to vaccinate the younger, the younger and they yeah. need to. Um, so, so it, it, so those are the places that I mask outside. I want to distinguish outside masking from vaccination rates in a way, because there's a whole body of science that actually has been there the whole time. Um, and I wish I'd pushed on earlier that outside transmission is very, very low. Rare, yeah. And in fact, the best study is, let's just say Wuhan, China, they know how to do contact tracing. Mm. And so this was published in September, 2020 out of 7,324 cases that they assiduously contact traced one linked mm. outside transmission. Mm. That's a pretty good odds mm. that 7,000 times the rate inside than mm. outside. That's the best done study, but there's study after study, a university of Canterbury, very extensive review said it's so rare to get uh, COVID-19 outside. They, it hates ventilation. It disperses yeah. in the outside air yeah. um, that we should be pushing people outside. Humidity, ultraviolet, infinite ventilation, and exactly. natural spacing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All of those made it so hard to get it outside. So I think we can, dis- so the WHO, as you know, never said uh, that, uh, um, 
even before the vaccines, their guidelines say you don't have to mask outside. Right. Only if you can't distance do you have to mask outside. So right. that was always true, the WHO guidelines, which by the way, if you look at their mask guidelines are very well done. They really review the evidence. Yeah. And our guidelines were, were less, uh, ext- uh, they didn't get into the outdoor transmission. So we kind of just said, Wear a mask, save lives. This is our this is our uh, way of doing things. Our in this single country. There's answer. No nuance. Don't hold paradox. Don't, don't yeah, hold, exactly. And like wear a mask, yeah. save lives. And yeah. then you're like, wait, in the car when I'm alone. Like so, there's there's all that non nuance. We do that here. You know, just yeah. say no. Right. Um, the big drugs. Yeah. I mean, we're just this is our our way. Yeah. Um, so so it was non nuanced to even say that we had to wear them outside before. Right. But now you know, with these incredibly high rates of vaccination, I would say even the unvaccinated, of course, based on the outdoor transmission, don't have to wear masks outside unless you're in a dense crowd um, in a high prevalence region. But unvaccinated should be exercising, going around without outside. And I've been seeing more people doing it. Yeah. Vaccinated, the CDC even gave us last week, they said, okay, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask outside. They yeah. could have included the unvaccinated unvac- yeah. because of the outdoor science. Yeah, I agree, I agree. You know, and this is not without harm. That's the thing, because it, 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 you think twice, like I have to bring a mask to go outside walking. I see people biking with masks on. I see but p- dads biking with their kid, kids wearing, three-year-old kid wearing a mask yeah. on a bike. Yeah. And you're just like, but this is not a childhood. <laughs> like you could yeah, say- it's you know, just, it's, yeah. it, it's not. And yeah. it's also not scientific. It's not it's scientific. Just... So in a way, what it is, is it's actually doubly harmful. Number one, it, you know, it impinges on the liberty of having your face exposed outside where you know, we were evolved to be yeah, out, yeah. right? It's one thing inside here. And in fact, even the Indians in the, in the Pune um, Zoom call that they did with Stanford that I was on, they were saying, you know, it, it's the enti- it's ripping through families. Yeah. So whole families Married are coming inside. in sick and they're all yeah. inside. And, and, and we're so- We're mass even then, yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, so, so yeah. inside, inside. And, but here, here it's, it's saying, not only is this, but it's since it's unscientific, we're encouraging a kind of a fear mindset that's not based in reality. So people seem to think that now everybody else is poisoned. Like I see someone walk on a trail this way, I'm walking on a trail this way, and suddenly everyone's like this, and they're distancing, and it's like, dude, we're human beings. Like, we're not gonna get sick this way. The science says we're not. Yeah. And it's harmful to our minds. It's harmful to our psyche. I am worried about this thing where you, you know, I decided to take my, since I've been, I wrote a paper or I wrote an op-ed in Wall Street Journal about take off your mask outside. I decided to just, of course, I have to model scientific behavior. Yeah. So I started taking off my mask outside in San Francisco and people will like- Oh, they'll walk around. Yeah, they'll walk, well, they were glaring some and then some just were like, like I was, you know, something scary. And I thought, wow, that, makes me like that's that does a jolt to a human being because yeah. you're like I am totally scientific and thinking scientifically and I also write about mass but it was they don't know who I am but like it's amazing to think that we've gotten into this conditioning where we think people are just being people are infected just by being human yeah I mean but we did this this whole time the whole time like, we did this yeah. we it was not like everyone was infected right like, but we act like and, and all of these masking distancing ventilation worked we didn't have to keep kids out of school we didn't just like we went to work as doctors we could still be doctors anyway we did this the whole time this is a whole other topic but yeah. um for right now not masking outdoors for anyone in the United States unless you're in a dense crowd in a high prevalence region which is getting very uh, unlikely um, is is indicated by the science Science. I think it's hilarious that like people are giving you wide berth when you're like wrote that first I, I paper. I believe yeah. I said the mother yeah. of masks. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. here you are saying it's okay now. The science yeah. says this, and yeah. and they still. But that but that's what we've done is we've conditioned people, and yeah. I think it's unfortunate because it's anti scientific. Yeah, it you is. know, and it's going to lead to again if we don't say get vaccinated, take your mask off we're gonna generate anti-vaccine sentiment because people are gonna be like, so what's the point? That's what I'm worried about. See, as an HIV doctor, I think positive messaging has always gone far. Yeah, You can have sex without a condom. I'm sorry, that's positive messaging for people. Um, And that was with pre-exposure prophylaxis prep and like treatment as prevention. Like those are, those are good things to say that, that people can be safe. Um, and it's positive messaging to say, you don't have to wear a mask. Like if you yeah. get vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. I think that's positive. I think it's negative to keep on wearing masks after you've been vaccinated. Like, I'm sorry, but I do see President Biden in a room with a small group of people. And <laughs> I know, not only do I know they've been vaccinated, but like I saw it <laughs> happen on TV. Yeah. Like, cause he, like Kamala Harris vaccinated TV. Right. Those guys, could unmask. They could sit right next to each other and talk to each other face to face like you and I. I know they've both been vaccinated, right. but there is this kind of putting on the mask on mm. TV. And I know we're trying to signal, I know what we're trying to signal there. We're trying to say we are not Trump. But that but actually 
that isn't signaling to me that you aren't Trump. That's signaling to me that you're not being scientific. You're not, you're not, you're not following science. Science, and, yeah. and we are not in April, July, November, even December, 2020. We are in May, 2021, and mm -hmm. you're both been vaccinated and it's really okay to do it. Mm -hmm. And your CDC guidelines say that you can be unmasked and undistanced if you're both vaccinated or you're a small group that's vaccinated. So take them off. Show that you believe in that in mm. that public health guidelines, and I think and you mention. will get mention, mention it. it. I've yeah. gotten vaccinated. That's why I'm not wearing yeah. a mask with yeah. all my vaccinated people in this room. And that may make people who are still on the fence get change vaccinated. their mind. I agree. And you know, the, the, this idea of persuasion means you have to when you talk, you have to positive incentives. Stop shaming people. We talk about this every show we are yeah. on. Yeah? yeah, and and it's weird because I used to be the like you know pro vax like. Um, uh, absolutist in the uh, when before COVID, when it was all about MMR and yeah, you know, kids yeah, dying yeah, of yeah. you know getting measles and stuff, and so it it was very emotional for me, and I felt like these people are really anti scientific and so on. But I had it wrong. I absolutely had it wrong. That's not how you talk to people, and mm. all you're doing is rallying your own tribe. And oh, it gets a lot of views and a lot of likes and 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 a lot of polarization, which is exactly what social media thrives on. What you have to say is, hey, I understand why you're reluctant. Like, yes, this and is let scary. Me, let me tell, yeah. I see, I really agree with that because compassionate messaging, which we could have done about masks too, never tell someone to wear a stupid mask yeah. or- Wear your damn um, mask. Wear yeah. your damn mask, yeah, yeah. or there was even the F word in there. Oh, I like that um, one, yeah. but, uh, but But it was, it, that was such a terrible way. Some health mess, uh, some public health messengers with platforms message that way. Oh, I know. Saying that people time. were COVID idiots and- COVID idiots, not, yeah, yeah, that's the best one. not wearing masks. Yeah. So that was so uncompassionate. I, I, I couldn't stand that behavior by public health people. But this is how I see like the vaccine hesitant. I kind of divide them in four groups. One is, of course, ethnic racial minorities. Um, yeah. Not all, but like many people who've had that history un are, are distrustful of how quickly this went. This is fair. That is fair to have distrust. This wasn't a great nation on trust with the medical system. And that really involves, I think, what is happening, maybe not enough, is community-based messaging, yeah. working with communities, community doctors who look like the community, talking, educating, that's one approach. Community health workers. Yes. Uh, who, Bringing vaccines to people so it's convenient exactly if you're working right. all day. Showing by example. Yes, and showing by example, yeah. showing like by, getting hey, vaccinated, yeah. right. So, so, uh, so I think that's one group. Then the second group is young who, you know, they had a really hard year. Like their colleges were shut down. They weren't really at risk as much. And they simply had a hard year. And yeah. they are working, trying to do their thing, make it convenient for young, like college campuses, um, do it there, do it at night, do it in the weekends, give them vaccines where it's easy yeah. and when they have time. And then I think that there are some people who really don't trust them and I'm not sure we can get to them, but right. at least be compassionate. And be then the fourth is people who think, these guys keep on double masking after vaccination and they're double masking outside after vaccination. They're never going to let the world change. And unless you take off your double mask healthcare messenger, I'm, I'm not, not going to get anything. vaccinated. Uh, and I'm going to, and that's positive motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I think you're exactly right. I think, the, and then, you know, there's some people that are just kind of a little delusional. Yeah. Um, that's very rare. That's yeah. actually unusual, but they yeah. are the outsized voice. So yes. they come up with the theories like, oh, this causes sterility. And now you're shedding spike protein and women are miscarrying around vaccinated people. And then you have this idiot's school and uh, I said idiot. Yeah, see, shaming. but we're not going to yeah, do that. We're not doing that. Yeah. We have this private school that exercises First Amendment rights to say you cannot be an employee of our school if you've been vaccinated. Yeah, the Sentner Academy in Florida. And the oh. reason they said, is they cited misinformation online that vaccinated women shed spike protein that cause other women nearby to either become sterile or miscarry or have abnormal menses. Um, so clearly crazy talk, right? And I did a show on it, but th th there's that. And the thing is people are willing to believe that because they see people double masking while still being vaccinated saying it's never gonna get better, Be because they're being called I COVID do, idiots, yeah. you know? It, it, yeah. We just didn't do it right in this country. We're so mean to each other. We like, are nasty. The politicization was so w bad. Wanna hear a funny story. So we talk about polarization a lot. You talk about how much you hate Twitter. I hate it too. Yeah. The, the reason we hate it is, it again, you can't hold paradox. You can't hold nuance. You have to stake a claim and then just pound on it and assume the other person is evil. Like not even just a human, they're just evil. They're just wrong and they're a COVID idiot or they're uh, you know, a, a vax Nazi or whatever it is. See, right? next time when you think about your Twitter foe, they, they look like this <laughs> and you can't be mean to Frodo. You Berto. can't be mean. You know, I there's never a- call them a COVID idiot. There, you shouldn't. And there's one um, interesting thing about Frodo, when you imagine like when you have anger arise or you have some emotion, what we classically call negative emotions, there's no emotion that's negative. It's just an energy pattern you feel. 
if you imagine that that energy pattern is a little Frodo mm-hmm. and, and he's arising to try to keep you safe, he's like, woof, 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 woof. But he's and so he's cute. he's gonna throw that ring. He's so cute. He's gonna get Patton's waved and tomorrow by the Mount Biden Doom. administration and throw that wing into Mordor. Suddenly, your anger dissipates as something that is not is not other than you and, 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 it, and it, it passes, you don't hold on to it. I think what's happening, the, the story I wanted to tell was this company called Basecamp, which is a software company, had to actually make a rule, which became super controversial, like a third of their uh, employees quit, that said internal like Slack channel conversations among employees cannot anymore be about political topics because you guys are killing each other. You're distracting from work, you're hating each other, you're polarized. And I, at first I was like, wait, you can't stifle free speech. And then I was like, why is this happening? It's happening because yeah. people treat Slack like social media. These people work together, but when they're on Slack, they're non-playable characters, they're enemies. Oh. And it's like, well, you like Trump? Well, you like Biden? Well, you like it? Well, I'm a social justice. Well, you're not a social justice. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Back and forth, back and oh, forth. Wow. And suddenly they hate each other. Oh. And and what we've That's done- That's not a good work environment. It's a, it's a <laughs> yeah. I, I'm feeling assaulted and I yeah, don't even work there. Yeah, it's not a collaborative work and environment. And so the whole idea is that we've taken social media now, we've brought it into the workplace where we can hurt each other in the workplace, where it used to be we would have, so here's what one company did, which was, I thought was remarkable. Remarkable. They said, okay, you guys can post anything you want, but if you post a link about anything political or anything like that, any statement, you have to first post a video of yourself saying why you think this video is important for you to watch and what it means to you. Wow. And then if, you have to, if you're gonna respond, you also have to respond with a video because what does that do? It puts a face there, it puts a voice there, it yes. reminds you that's a human. And then to respond, you gotta put your own face there and suddenly they're not non-playable characters anymore. They're actually humans. That's so interesting. Cause this is why I think we do need to go back to work by the way. After yeah, this, like, I agree. You know how this whole idea oh, that like everyone's bad. gonna be at home and, and hybrid we'll is hybrid. Fine. Hybrid is fine. Okay, but, maybe yeah. some hybrid, but yeah. I want people to see each other face to face when we get through the mass vaccination campaign and yep. the United States because it does make people more like humanize human. them. Yeah. 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 I hope people go back to work. Absolutely. I think we will. You know, I think we're 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 hitting that tipping point. Now, now that reminds me, kids and vaccinations. Like what's your thinking on the very young and give me an age cutoff. Like where do you think we should not be necessarily focusing our vaccine efforts? Well, you know, I this has not gotten published or anything, but I did. But but when we talked about these three uh, places where we could still get back more vaccines out to other people, I also think that focusing on vaccinating eleven and younger in yeah. this country, when so many people that we can see actively are dying in other countries um, from COVID nineteen, is uh, very uncharitable. So uh, I do think mm-hmm. we have to think about this stress on younger kids because they just haven't been um, at risk uh, for severe disease from COVID-19 to spare the young. Yeah. However, what do I think that age should be? Well, it, it, I think that any parent should decide for themselves if they want to vaccinate their child when they're young. Yeah. Um, but right now those safety and um, studies have not been done. They're not going to be efficacy. St- the safety and efficacy study for 12 to 15 has been done mm. for Pfizer. They've EUA has been applied. The authorization has been applied for by the FDA. 100% and effective, right? Yeah, 100% <laughs> I mean, effective because kids not, don't get COVID that get much, but sick, the 18 yeah. cases that occurred were all in, <laughs> the, in the placebo arm. Right. So it was 100% effective and, and it was safe. And so the 12 to 15 year old EUA will come out, you know, before the fall, um, uh, semester and, ch- and parents should decide for themselves. I'll likely get my children vaccinated because I love vaccines. Yeah, um, and they're in that age range. But eleven to younger, um, the they can't do an efficacy study because there's so few symptomatic COVID cases in that population. So it's only going to be safety and immunogenicity. So make sure it's safe, and then see if their antibodies go up, mm. and hopefully T cells they'll measure too. So see if that happens. And um, but it can't be efficacy, and it's not going to be efficacy. If it's safe, um, it's not powered to detect rare events, of course, right. like we saw with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, that was you know, very rare, but, but you need lots of people to be powered to see that in the clinical trials. It's not powered for rare events, but if it's safe, then I think every parent will decide for themselves. But the um, CDC can likely only mandate vaccinations in a school for vaccine preventable illnesses that are um, that harm children right. um, uh, disproportionately. And right now those are measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, and pertussis. Right. And I don't think COVID can join that list given that it spares the young more. Yeah. But there may be schools that uh, will ask, but I don't think they can mandate it. It feels influenza-ish for kids. Yes, you know, yeah. well, it is, yeah. it is. I mean, that I know that's hard for people to hear because Trump said- 
Trump said COVID is the same, COVID is the same as the flu, which is inaccurate for right, adults. Right. However, it is accurate for children in the sense that 11 children died of COVID in 2020 in California um, in 2020, and uh, 16 children had died of influenza in 2018. So right. it is it is uh, similar to right. flu in children. Right. So, um, so I don't know if it'll be mandated, but I think that people can choose for themselves. But it does, I don't think we're gonna need it though to get to herd immunity. And that's yes. the final point I wanna make. Because yeah. you don't actually have to look at like some paper like for, about measles, like some epidemiologic paper and like be all geeky and stuff to think about herd immunity. Just look at the world stage. It's like playing out in front of your very eyes. Mm. Places that don't have high rates of vaccination tragedy multifold. India. Yeah. Uh, places that have high rates of vaccination that are faster than we. Israel. Let's look at Israel and the UK. It's playing out. It's showing us what happens. At 62% first dose in Israel, they had something like 50 cases today. I, yesterday I was looking. Um, so that's out of a country of nine, uh, uh, 9 million people. They had zero deaths and they've had zero deaths for a number of days mm. now. They have no one in their hospitals for, mm. with COVID. I mean, that's what 62% first dose does for you. Mm. 62%, they're still gonna give more yeah, uh, to over yeah. 16s. Yeah. So I think the fact that in this country, 14.5% of our population is 11 and younger. Mm. And that means 84.5% of us, by that, I mean, we don't, need to get right to, yeah, yeah. we don't need to get to 84.5% right. to get to herd immunity, probably much less, so it won't be required. So yeah, that, that that's the important piece, because I think a lot of moms have reached out to me saying, you know, my, my kid, now some will say, my kid has medical issues and I'm worried, and when is it gonna be approved? Because they wanna protect their child who's yeah. at higher risk. And any, that makes plenty of sense. parent can choose for Absolutely. their Absolutely, and that, their I think that's so. Now, yeah. Joe, Joe Rogan, I don't know if you know him at all. You know. I heard some rumors, but I didn't see. Right, so I mean, he, I, I, didn't, I didn't watch the full thing, but basically, he said, look, if you're in, you know, if, you, if I'm a guy in my 20s and I'm healthy and I eat right and exercise, I don't think I need the vaccine. Oh. Now, he got a lot of crap for saying that because everyone was like, you know, Biden and everybody was like, hey, you're not a doctor, or you shut up. It's like, well, no, he has a platform and he's expressing what a lot of young people feel. So instead of like pillorying him yeah. and shaming him, maybe go, oh, well, hey, I'll go on Joe's show and talk about maybe why it is and isn't important, like why you would make a decision for a 20 year old. Exactly, right? see, that's that compassionate based how we talk to each other. Right. So I, what I would say is actually you're right, like young people are much less likely to get ill. And yet we are sort of saying, please, like herd immunity is tremendously important to reach because then we can stop testing and going wild and, and going crazy and right. it just would be really helpful. And right. so we're actually appealing to the young because we know these vaccines are safe and effective to right. please get vaccinated to protect others. So, and actually we have done that. We have done that throughout history. Each flu after it stopped being serious in children, um, we vaccinate to protect older people. We have vaccinated uh, younger people to protect older people throughout history. So it would be just say, but it's saying it compassionately instead of saying, you're so you you would should never say no. It's inaccurate that younger people are less likely to get ill than older people. That epidemiology is out there. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty. It's very obvious. The CDC website. You just have yeah. to look every day. I mean, if you if you if you want a surefire way to alienate Joe Rogan's audience, yes. right, which is young males predominantly, go and attack him like that. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you know what? How about you get like. Vivek Murthy or someone to come on a show and oh, I don't care who it is yeah. and and say, okay, well, here's the pros and cons and hit me up, Joe, you're a curious guy, ask some questions. Is the thing safe? What do you think about it, mRNA? And he's done shows like that. So I think that, um, again, there's a heterodox aversion in this country where you cannot say the wrong thing without getting um, the scarlet letter on you instead of just saying, hey, you know what? I strongly disagree with that. Let's talk about this. Let's talk right. about it because herd immunity will actually help young people because they won't even have to think about it for testing or everything else that comes along with the, with the terror of a, right. um, of a virus. Like it, it just, if we could get to herd immunity where it's so contained, we would really need the young people's help. Yeah, yeah, I concur. Have you, um, so, Let's see now, what else is kind of crazy in the news right now about vaccines? Uh, I mean, there's that guy, you know. They don't cause infertility. They don't yep. make vaccines. Um, they don't make the virus hypermutate to be. Yeah, so this is a Gert von den Busch uh, thing. So I did a show about this guy. So he's a virologist in Europe. And he's saying it's cause, it puts selective pressure on, causes it to hypermutate. There's early imprinting so that your immune response is just to one type. And then when it mutates, you can't fight it. 
And none of that has really been shown no, to be and the in case. Fact, yeah. The one good thing to remember about um, any human being or a virus is you can't actually mutate indefinitely because it comes at a fitness comes at cost. A cost. Yeah. And so the way he said it to and I is like, if we grew a hand out of our head, we couldn't wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and so wouldn't that be a huge fitness cost? It'd be a fitness cost, but you'd be able to slap people. So you <laughs> okay, might be a little right. You might you might be a little more deadly in the short one, pap, but you're not gonna get laid, so you're not gonna reproduce. So it comes at a fitness cost. Like who's gonna marry to have okay, sex with someone with a hand on their head? I mean, some people have a fetish, but I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just trying to make <laughs> I try to make the point you can't mutate indefinitely. And a virus, um, it can mutate, for example, to become more transmissible. That's actually the smartest thing it could do. Right. And I think the virus has, has done, done that. that. Yeah. Yes, but but it can't at the same time also become like hypervirulent more and deadly. evade the immune system all of a sudden. Yeah, and like, right. it just literally is just literally a function of biology. That's just, right. And there's you, only- you there's only yeah. so many spots on that spike protein that yes, can change. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So, so I think people who, that's why, you know, the variant Schmerin thing, I, I'm very sympathetic to. It's like, no, 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 okay. You can talk about variants in a sense of this. It's pressure to get vaccinated. Yes. Like all the more pressure to get yes, vaccinated. Yes, that's yeah. a reason to get vaccinated. But right. please don't tell me that <laughs> 52 T cells across a spike protein, that was the NIH article. Oh, interesting. That they showed that you form CD8 cells. This was NIAD actually, and Dr. Fauci talked about it in our program, but you form CD8 cells across 52 different pieces of the spike protein. That's a lot. You have a couple of mutations, it brings down one of the epitopes. And they showed that the South Africa variant, couple of the variants may bring down 51. So, you, so now you have 51 epitopes that you're fighting <laughs> with CD8 cells. So you you can't evade the immune system, not not the T cell mediated immunity yeah. um, to vaccines. And the fact that young people are more affected in these second waves, I think that happened in 1918 as well in the Spanish flu pandemic. Yes. Is that a function of the virus actually changing its viral load transmissibility? I, we would never have known that, but that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was the, the thought was that they were just like, Gathering more in World War One, and right, people back here were war. gathering more. Kind of what so happened there was in just India. More, yes, yes, more yes. of these. When like, you gather, yes, it yeah, spreads. interesting. And so, yeah, we, even with this, we're seeing second wave almost assuredly, as usual, bigger than first wave. Um, of course, we're on what our fourth wave or something. I don't yes, know. I've lost yes. track of the waves. We're done with waves. Yeah, we're, we're done. done we're waves, done. Though, now we're on the ebbing. Yeah, ebbing. Yeah. It will. It will. It will have keep on ebbing, and the only way to get out of a pandemic. Pure and simple. It's not through mass distancing, contact tracing, testing, and ventilation. Those are tools. Yeah. The solution is vaccines. Vaccination. The only way to get through a pandemic is to become immune to the pathogen. And Frodo, and Frodo. you, my darling, are so immune. I look at you. <laughs> you know, I feel like he has a German oh, there accent. Was something. He yeah. does have a you I feel so? like he does. Like, put him up against the mic. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Frodo. Uh, there are several things we'll talk about today. Number one, T cells. Number two, B cells. Number three, C cells. What's a C cell? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> My name is Frodo, and I've got a license to ill. That's right. Now suddenly I'm Russian. Now I'm Russian, Frodo. Now that doesn't fit. See, he's more German. <laughs> He's so German. <laughs> Achtung, Frodo, Achtung. Schnell, schnell. Oh, look, he's so adorable. I just want to squeeze him. He's smelly. I know. Paradox. You said he was, but I can't paradox. smell. I can't no, smell. You, you got to hold paradox. paradox. You gotta, oh, he's so cute. I can hold the paradox. I love that you just bring a smelly <laughs> animal into my, into my OCD studio and I want to hug him. <laughs> <laughs> but it just means we can hold these things all at once. We can hold paradox. We can, we exactly. can hold paradox. My hermetically sealed studio can coexist with lovely Frodo and his smells. Miasma. <laughs> Miasma. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, every time you come, I'm filled with a sense of radiant joy. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, every time I come, I'm filled with how delightful you are, but I had no idea that you could do accents that well. Now I will come all the time. My, my, you are amazing. I, I'm not sure I can do them well. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm gonna get a 13 comments. That was not German. That was more of Dutch. I don't know what you're doing. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, the last thing we got to end on like a, a spiritual note here. Humans need to go back to human stuff. Yeah. India, we need to, and part of being human is helping our fellow humans, yes, conscious yes. entities. If, if you're thinking about India all the time right now, that is what you should be doing. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah, even the energy is probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I think um, even India, is gonna get better, but it's gonna come at a high cost. And it means that we have to do our part to make it better. Yeah, yeah. so patents we talked about. Patents, wave the patents, um, please. And, and, and uh, give doses, give multiple doses. Yeah, 
because yeah. they're readily available. They're there. Sitting there, yeah. Well, you don't have to make it, give it to them. And the scarcity in the US is much better now. So yeah. people who want to get vaccinated probably get vaccinated. Yes, they can. Yeah, which means, wow, a politician actually kept a promise. Yes. Both of them did, actually. <laughs> yes, yes, they did, <laughs> yeah. they did, they yeah. did. Vaccines were the solution, they both did it. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Science for the win, Science. I love it. <laughs> don't everything wear a mask else, outside. Everything else, apocalypse. <laughs> Science, don't wear a mask outside. Don't wear, yeah. <laughs> That's don't wear our final mask. message. You know yeah. what, that's my new uh, t-shirt. I'm gonna yeah. make that shirt. Science, don't wear a mask outside. Don't wear a mask outside because science. Science. <laughs> yes. Don't follow the science because that's dogma. Follow science. Yes. Because that's a process. Monica, thank you. Thank you very much. So a Frodo, thank you. Thank you. Bye, says Frodo. Z pack, share the video, become a supporter, yada yada yada. Links, my website, zdogmd.com. You, me, equals us. All right, we out. Peace. <laughs>